<laughs> okay, I think you'll be able to understand what I say much more easily than the uh, uh, than the high tech uh, climatologists. We, we shall see uh, whether, in fact, you uh, you do or not. I, I'm going to start with a little bit of history. That this this is a graveyard. Okay. Uh, uh, and this here is uh, a gravestone, as you can see, and here is a culex trap. Uh, it's a trap I devised for studying certain viruses transmitted by mosquitoes, St. Louis encephalitis. And I was working in Memphis, Tennessee. By the way, we're going to come back to this, uh, this cemetery. Working in Memphis, Tennessee, um, collecting mosquitoes in order to isolate viruses. And one day, Totally to my surprise, a mosquito appeared in my collection that had never ever been seen before in the Western Hemisphere. It was an Asian mosquito, and we call it now the Asian tiger mosquito. It was unknown uh, to the world before then. It's a very pretty mosquito. I, I, I would say it's as pretty as a polar bear. So, uh, the Asian tiger mosquito uh, was here, and there was just one of them. Uh, a couple of years later, uh, uh, we found something else was happening. I, I worked as a merchant seaman for a short time during when I was a student. And in those days, some time ago, uh, essentially cargoes were unloaded from ships piece by piece. What I realized when I found my one mosquito was that things had changed a great deal. This was the way that things are transported. <clears throat> it was no longer possible to inspect cargoes when they arrived on the wharf side. Um, and so, <clears throat> Essentially, uh, the mobility uh, of, of creatures like my mosquito was very much increased. Well, in 1985, we at CDC uh, had the uh, message that life was miserable in Houston because of a mosquito that they didn't know about, but later was identified as, as my mosquito, uh, Aedes albopictus. Uh, the kids are getting eaten alive, uh, even the dog goes wild. Uh, the the uh, barbecuing is, is rather difficult. So, so the feds st stepped in. We had a, uh, a meeting down in Houston, Texas. Here you can see us looking over a tire dump. This mosquito really likes to breed in old used tires that contain water. The tire for this mosquito is rather like a tree hole. Uh, these are tree hole breeding forest mosquitoes originally. Um, and I was doing the sort of things that biologists do, looking at the ecology of the mosquito, finding uh, the productivity of these tires. And one evening I was amazed to see that there were some people, a couple of guys, who were loading my tires, the tires I was studying, onto the back of a pickup. So I, I went to them. In, it told me that their, their company export the tires uh, to Guatemala and Mexico. So I thought, oh, that's terrible. Now we know that this mosquito is going to go to areas where dengue, for example, is a major disease. And this, this mosquito can transmit, does transmit dengue, and as we come to later, chikungunya. But I asked them, well, how on earth do you have enough tires uh, to ship to these countries? How do you find enough? And they said, well, our company ships them in from India. I couldn't believe that people would ship in used tires from another continent. In fact, it turned out they were shipping them in from Asia. And that there was essentially a world trade in used tires. A massive world trade in used tires. What we saw was that the Japanese were exporting at that time to 137 different countries. Used tires from Japan and that the United States was not too far behind, uh, shipping out to 110 countries. This number of countries has actually increased since the 1980s. These tires are shipped for recapping in some areas, for direct use in, in, in much poorer countries. Um, specialist tires like airplane tires and heavy machinery tires go several times to specialists in the United States, uh, etc. We looked at uh, tire shipments in, in Seattle, we found 25% of tires coming from Japan had water in them, and we found five species of mosquitoes. I even found these snow tires at the WHO uh, um, offices in, in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> so now, my mosquito is now in many countries. It's essentially all over the Western Hemisphere, uh, uh, except Canada, Alaska, and Chile. It's in at least 12 countries in Europe. It's really common in countries like Italy. It's now well established in Belgium and in Holland. 
It's also in Africa. It recently was responsible for a transmission in Gabon uh, of, of a, an epidemic of chikungunya virus. It's present in, in Biafra in Nigeria. It's really, oh, it's also in the Beka Valley in Syria, Lebanon. So it's really done very well. Now, you've heard me mention chikungunya. Chikungunya is a viral disease. It's a nasty febrile disease. Uh, it's a bit like dengue, uh, but it, the sequels are, are, are more serious. You have severe arthritis that can last for months, even years. So, uh, in, 19, in 2005, uh, an outbreak of chikungunya appeared on, on the Kenya coast in Lamu, uh, on, on the Swahili coast. No great surprise, this is a virus that essentially is transmitted between monkeys in the forests. Uh, and if a person goes into the forest, gets bitten by an infected mosquito, and then goes into the city, there are mosquitoes like Albopictus and another species, Aedes aegypti, that uh, can transmit. And so you get an urban uh, outbreak. And that's what we saw. From Lamu, we saw it going to, to uh, Mombasa, then to the Comoro Islands, then to Mayotte, uh, to, to Mauritius, and then we saw it in India. Now, of course, mosquitoes don't fly from uh, islands in the Indian Ocean to India, but this is the way that, the, uh, that the, the pandemic spread. And this was not very unusual. The unusual thing was that it, it occurred in a department, the département of France, essentially a, a county of France, the most southernmost county of France that's in the Indian Ocean. Uh, and so we had a pandemic. Uh, quite clearly, uh, Quite clearly, uh, the vector of this uh, pandemic was not strictly the mosquito, it was uh, the Boeings and the Airbuses that moved people around with viruses. And what was uh, really expectable was that it suddenly appeared in Europe. In one small uh, town called Castiglione, it appeared. Castiglione was heavily infested with uh, Albopictus, with the, the tiger mosquito, and no great surprise there was transmission. But we got a statement from various people, including the World Health, Health Organization, who made a press statement saying, we cannot see that the disease was caused by climate change, but the conditions in Italy are now suitable for the tiger mosquito. I should have told you that the tiger mosquito is native as far north as Beijing in China where it is extremely cold in the winter time. It survives in Chicago, which is not exactly a tropical city. Uh, there, are, there are infestations in, in, in Nebraska, etc. So there's no great surprise that it, it likes the Mediterranean climate of, 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 of northern Italy. Uh, nevertheless, there was a sort of relief. The lady who made this statement is a German. And she said, there, there is no chance now that it will spread over the mountains to Germany because the temperature in the mountains is very low. Some kind of conception that the mosquitoes would actually fly over, over the, the, the Alps. So you can see that now, as I said, Boeing and Airbus, or should I say Airbus and Boeing, uh, are transmitting uh, viruses, are transporting viruses. So we have this quantum leap in the mobility of vectors and mobility of viruses. You can see uh, some data here I found the other day on the web that 1.2 million people, uh, Indians or people, travel to India and Pakistan from the United Kingdom every year to areas very often that are malarious. So you see those figures there. Essentially, people are moving around the world. Uh, there's no reason to say that temperatures were responsible for the uh, for the chikungunya outbreak in. in, in uh, in Italy, you can see there's very, very little change in temperatures.